Hello, welcome to another video. Here we have a simple project and the project is you're given a square and you're asked to insert another square inside the first square such that the inner square is always touching the outer square. Well, you know that if you keep them aligned together, once you reduce the size of the inner, inner square, it will never touch the outer square. The only trick you could do is turn it like I just did here. So this is the question. What is the smallest square that you can insert such that if you turn it properly, it will still touch the outer square that's bigger? Well, the bigger square you can insert is definitely the same size as what you have here on the outside. But what is the size of the smallest one? And that's our mission. Now, you don't need to know calculus to be able to do this because this is actually a pre-calculus problem. So I'm going to use the pre-calculus method to solve it. But you could also use calculus optimization. Well, let's not waste time. Let's get into it. So the first few things you need to do is to set up all the things that you know. We don't know what the size of the inner square is, so I'm going to give it a side x. Okay, so I'm going to say let this be x. Okay, and I know that the outside square is um, of length 5. So, um, what else do I know? Well, basically, you have to be able to talk about these triangles here. Are they the same in size? Well, just by looking intuitively, you would say, yes, they should be the same just by looking. But in case you need to prove it, you just need to show that this angle here is the same as this angle. Well, that's true because this angle is equal to this angle. Because if you take this triangle, you know that if you add this to 90 degrees to this angle, you should get 180 degrees. But if you come to just this point, if you add this to 90 degrees plus another angle, which automatically would be this one, it's the same angle. So this angle is this and this is this. We don't need to know the sizes of the angles. We just want to show that this angle and this angle and this and this are the same. And if you do that for all three angles and they have one side in common, and you have another side in common because we can show, uh, let's say we say this side is T, let's call this T. Then it means that this side is also T and this is T and the whole length of this is five. So this must be five minus T, okay. And we're ready because once you're able to connect all the three sides together, for this triangle, this, this, and this, you have something to work with. So, what is the first, first connection? Well, the area we're looking for, area of square on the inside is x squared. But by Pythagorean theorem, what do we know? By Pythagoras, We know that from this triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is the sum of these squares. We can say that x squared, which is the area we're looking for, is equal to t squared plus 5 minus t squared. So what do we do next? Well, let's simplify this. If we expand this, we're going to have x squared will be equal to t squared um, plus the expansion of this is going to be, let's write it out, 5 minus t, 5 minus t. Well, this is going to be equal to t squared plus 25 minus 10t plus t squared. So we can say the area is equal to x squared, which is t squared plus t squared is 2t squared minus 10t plus 25. Okay. But remember the mission is to find the smallest area. We want to find the smallest square that will still make contact with the outside, uh, out, the, the outer square you know, if you manipulate it well. There's going to be a point where this, 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 the inner square will be too small for you to, if it touches this side and this side, 
It probably may touch this, but then it will not be able to touch the fourth side or at least the other two sides. So, but we want it to touch all four. So we wanna look for the smallest area that makes this equation true. So what should you do? Now, if you're doing calculus, this is where you do your dy dx equate to zero and get the optimal value for the minimum area. But if you're not doing calculus, you need to complete the squares and write this in vertex form. So what, when we do optimization for a quadratic, what we're actually doing is we're writing the vertex form, but in a more, in a fancier way. So let's write this in vertex form. And if you want to do that, you complete the squares. So right now, don't pay attention to anything that does not contain t. So our focus is going to be on these two. So we're going to write this as equal to, now I'm going to factor out the two common to this two. So it's going to be two times t squared minus 5t plus 25. I haven't changed anything, but this is my focus. Now, ignore the 2 for now. Ignore the 25 for now. Focus on this. To complete the squares, you always have to have a leading coefficient of 1, and the second term has to be linear. That's it. So what should I do? Now, this is the rule. Look at the b, which is the middle coefficient, which is negative t, I mean negative 5. Now, divide negative 5 by 2 and then square it and then add it to it. So, look at the next line. It's going to be 2 times t squared minus 5t. You see how I wrote exactly, but I'm going to add something to this. And what I'm going to add to it is half of this squared, which is going to be, well, again, since you're adding, after you square minus 5 over 2, it's going to, so I'm just going to write minus 5 over 2 squared. That's what I just added. It's the only thing I have added, okay? Everything else was what was there, but I just added this guy. But in order to not add it, I have to subtract it immediately. So I have not changed anything. This is what you call completing the squares for anything that doesn't start with a 1. See, I factored it out. Now, let's simplify this and get our answers. So this is going to be 2 multiplied by, this is t squared minus 5t. If you square this, you're going to get plus 25 over 4. If I square this, I'm going to get 25 over 4, but it's going to have a minus. But this is what I'm going to do. Okay, let's write it. This is going to be minus 25 over 4, and then I'm going to write plus 25 on the outside. However, this is the part that I need, just this part. I don't need this guy in what I'm about to do. So I'm going to knock it out. And in knocking it out, I have to first multiply it by 2 so I can push it out of the parentheses. So if I multiply 2 by this, this 2 will cancel 2 out of this 2 and of, of this 4, and we have 2 left. So you have 25 over 2, but it's going to be outside now because I'm going to multiply it. So see what I'm going to do. This is 2 times t squared minus 5t plus 25 over 4. Close the parenthesis. Well, what about this? Well, I'm going to multiply it and I'm going to have the minus on the outside. But this time is going to be 25 over 2 plus 25. I'm going to write it this way, over 1. This 25 I've written this way. So, we're done. Because the next line, which is the area? The area is equal to 2 times. Now, this is a perfect square. Okay? It means I could have written this as t minus 5 over 2 squared. Actually, if you foil this out, this is what you're going to get. So that's the essence. And what's here? If I add this to this, or minus 25 over 2 plus 25 over 1, well, you can write this as 50 over 2, so that minus 25 plus 50 over 2 is going to be minus 25 over, oh, plus 25 over 2. So this is plus 25 over 2. And this is the vertex form. Okay, so 
Now, the vertex form gives you the minimum, if it's a minimum curve, well, the leading coefficient here is positive, so when you plot this graph, this is the area. You're gonna get an area that goes this way. Um, where's the vertex? Is here. So you're gonna have something that goes this way. The vertex is, no, the vertex is five halves, I'm sorry. So it's gonna be somewhere around here, okay? And this here will be the minimum area, and this is where the area is gonna occur when t is five over two. Okay, so now we have our answers. We can now say that the minimum area occurs, this is the, minim the minimum area, and this is the value of t when that minimum area occurs. Okay, so we say minimum area equals, let me write vertex form here. So minimum area is equal to 25 over two, and that happens when t equals five over two. So we could have said this was five over two, that's five, five over two is 2.5, so this is also 2.5. Oh, nice. So everything is just gonna be the same, and what would x be? We need to know what x is gonna be. Because remember that the area is x squared. So if you want to find x, this has to be the square root of this, which would be 5 over 2. Okay, if you just find x, which implies that x is equal to the square root of 25 over 2, which is equal to 5 over square root of 2, which is 5 rad 2 over two. This is what the value of x would be, but really the focus was to get the minimum area. This was what I was looking for. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.